there is a video explaining the rules of these speed runs. If you don't care, here you go. This is what we're going to see once we open up a sprite. We're going to click new file. My canvas is set to 720p. That's honestly too big, but I don't really give sh I'm drawing circles. Color mode is the mode of color for our canvas. RGB is if you want color. Grayscale if you want black and white. And index is if you want something very limiting. Background is the background for our canvas. Transparent is perfect for compositing. White is because I want a piece of paper. So let's sit through that. Okay, here's our workspace. Super clean, super simple. Don't have to do much to change that. To zoom in, you use the wheel. And to pan, you click in the space bar and you just click. All right, let's get into our hotkeys. We're going to go edit keyboard shortcuts. Let's search what I care about. How to turn on onion skin. F3. That's stupid. We're going to go to alt o like every other animation software let's look up the word frame so new new frame is actually to extend exposure so i'm gonna add a sub tool of plus and new empty frame is for straight ahead alt b perfectly fine to reduce exposures it's alt c but i'm gonna add a minus all right now let's see how to scroll through the timeline you either press the right arrow key or period to go forward and to go back you press left or the comma key okay that's super easy let's go to new layer shift n beautiful that's our hotkeys let's go to the brush tool this is our brush tool, this pencil right here. You can either press B to switch it or click it. And if you click it again, it reveals the sub tool of the spray can and you can press shift B to switch to that. Let's get to the brush tool settings. So we click this big circle right here. We have a circle nib, square nib, and a flat nib. And you can also add your own custom nibs. I'm not gonna do that because I'm just drawing circles, but there is a video in the playlist to help you do that if you're interested in that. Let's go into adjusting the size of the brush. You're gonna click that, either type in a new number or just scroll this little bar right here to adjust the size, very simple. So this inkwell is actually a very useful tool for coloring. I'm not gonna get into it because I don't really give a shit about it because I'm just drawing circles, but there is a video in the playlist that does. All right, this is actually our pressure, pressure sensitivity and velocity sensitivity. So this is what gives you our, our lines nuance. There is no stabilization that I know of in a sprite, but this is the best thing we have right now. So it looks a little confusing, but it's fairly simple. Let's say I want to adjust the size of my nib through pressure sensitivity. I'm gonna check this box in, make this a little bit bigger. I'm gonna draw fairly light and then super hard pressing. That's how, you, that's how that works. If you want velocity sensitivity, I'm gonna draw very slow I'm gonna draw very fast. That's how those tools work. So if you want your line to get bigger, the faster you move, click velocity. And if you want your line to get bigger, the more you press, click pressure. All right, let's go to the angle tool. So this actually just switches the angle of your nib. This is cool if you're using like the square nib or the, the flat nib. I don't really use it too much, but pressure, velocity, you know, the, you know the idea. Gradient. This is actually for shading. It's called dithering and pixel. It's just stippling. So the lighter I press, the, the lighter the shade and the harder I press, the darker the shade. Very, very simple. All right, let's get into our timeline. So this eye to tr make the layer invisible or visible. This is good if you want to just focus on one thing. And if you want to make that even more secure, we can lock the layer by using the lock tool. This is for adjusting exposures. Just have this clicked in for now for the background. Insert to adjust layer opacity, right click the layer name, click properties, there you go. Um, right after this, this little abacus looking thing is actually our onion skin settings. Let's set that to red blue tint already. And then over here is our onion skin. Click that in to turn it on, or you can press Alt O like we made it. All right, let's make some new frames. And then shift N for a new layer, awesome. For the onion skin, I'm gonna press Alt O. And if you want more exposure for your onion skin, you can just go to these little like checked in boxes. And then when you see an arrow pop up, that's how you scroll that. But I'm gonna keep it on once. So let's get to animating. I'm gonna go over here and let's start animating. So we're gonna go. All right, cool, there's an animation. Let's play this back. Obviously, there's too many frames, so let's make a loop real quick. So, to make a loop, you're just going to highlight all these frames by holding in left click, and we're going to right click, set loop selection, and that's how you make a loop. Let's play this one more time. This is very slow, but that's because the frame rate is very slow. So, let's adjust the frame rate. A sprite does us the disservice of having no frame rate adjustment, and you actually have to adjust it individually through the frames, and it does it in milliseconds. So, now we have to calculate how many milliseconds are in a single frame of animation. <laughs> So, there are 1,000 milliseconds in one second. Therefore, 1,000 over 1,000 is equal to one second. And there are 24 frames of animation in one second. Therefore, 24 over 24 is equal to one second. So that means, since these are both equal to one second, that 24 over 24 frames of animation is equal to 1,000 over 1,000 milliseconds. I like nice even numbers, so I'm gonna find out how many milliseconds are in two frames of animation. I'm gonna do two over 24 is equal to X over 1,000 because we don't know what that is in milliseconds. So let's isolate the X. We're going to multiply both sides by 1,000 over 1. That means the left becomes 2,000 over 24, and the right becomes x over 1 because both thousands canceled out each other. And x over 1 is just x. So that means 2,000 over 24 is equal to x. 2,000 over 24 equals 83.33. So 83.33 is equal to two frames of animation. I'm going to round this up because I like things to have weight and fuck you. So 84 milliseconds is equal to two frames of animation. Let's divide this by two. Therefore, 
42 frames is equal to one frame animation. If you're ever wondering why the true cinema frame rate is at like 23.94, this is why, because frames aren't perfect, therefore it has to be that weird frame rate. Cut to that, just kidding, I did that through editing. So, the answer is 42, that's how, that's how much one frame is equal to in milliseconds. All right, to do that, we're gonna right click all these ones again, frame properties, and make this 42. Let's play it, oh shit. All right, it's obviously too fast, so let's adjust the exposures. So you can either do it manually with the numbers or you can click this little blob thing right here and then just adjust exposures by pressing plus and minus like I am. All right, let's play this. Cool, perfect. All right, let's get into coloring. So we're gonna click this little jizz drop right here. Select the color, that's how you color, fairly simple. Now, let's get into adding colors to the palette. So, click the pencil. So, you have a couple options. You can either scroll this around and then just click this little exclamation mark. That's how you add one color. Or, you can see what I've been doing already and just creating kind of like a fake palette, like this. Then we click these little three lines, new palette from Sprite. And now, we have a specific palette for the colors we care about. It's a very useful tool. Now, let's delete these colors. Let's get to the select tool. You click this little uh, dotted box or you can press M to switch to that and if you click it again it reveals subtools but I don't care about those so this is the classic one where it just resets if you click again let's say you don't select enough you can click the select in addition to and it selects a lot more if you select too much you can see the subtraction tool it subtracts stuff and you can do select within select to select within your select insert you can also hold control just to move all the strokes at once but let's collect the classic so let's go into importing. Fairly simple. You just drag that bitch on there. It only takes images. So if you want to do a video, you're going to have to convert it to a GIF. And it even makes a little like a uh, palette for us. So very cool tool. So this is uh, Adam Sandler Sprite. Let's go into exporting. Fairly simple. We're going to go to export frames. Let's see. Yup. Actually, let me change the. So, all right. Export. Yes. Okay. All right. And. As I said in the rules, I am not even scratching the surface of these softwares. I'm just trying to help you animate a ball. You know, you have any corrections? Leave it in the comment. Help people out. Be nice. I hope this helped. And if you want to see other runs or even more of my videos, just click any of these playlists or click my channel. Thank you so much.